This week, Andy Stanley and the elders of North Point Church in Atlanta hosted the Unconditional Conference. What is the Unconditional Conference, you ask? It is billed as a two-day premier event for LGBTQ plus parents and children and for ministry leaders looking to discover ways to support parents and LGBTQ plus children in their churches. We're going to hear from Al Moeller, who wrote an article about 10 days ago, as well as gave his thoughts on his podcast. And we're going to hear from Dr. Michael Brown as well. I'll also weigh in just a bit as my wife and I have already lived this scenario out. And that scenario is, of course, living in a church that goes this direction and that is finally embracing same-sex affiliation in the church and uh, approving of so-called same-sex marriage. And finally, I reached out to the church at North Point. I'll tell you all about that and how I want this to be a respectful plea to the elders of North Point. So let's jump right in and hear what Dr. Moeller has to say. He's going to kind of frame up what this conference is all about. So we've been seeing this progressively in the case of Andy Stanley. There's no joy in talking about this, but I think it's necessary to talk about this. On Monday, I dropped a major article entitled The Train is Leaving the Station, published at World Opinions. I'm following up on that now on the briefing in order to set the larger context and to extend the conversation a bit. What drew our attention most recently is the fact that Andy Stanley and the church is set to host a conference known as the Unconditional Conference. It's going to be located at a campus in North Point Community Church there in the metro Atlanta area. Now, the website for the conference bills it as a two-day premier event, which is designed especially for parents of LGBTQ plus children and ministry leaders. Here's a quote. You will be equipped, refreshed, and inspired as you hear from leading communicators on topics that speak to your heart, soul, and mind. One statement above all others seems to stand out to me in that description, quote, No matter what theological stance you hold, we invite you to listen, reflect, and learn as we approach this topic from the quieter middle space, end quote. Now, I just want to go at those words for a minute, the quieter middle space, because I just want to say right up front, I believe that's illusory. I don't believe that quieter middle space exists. I can see why many might hope that it would exist. You might hope there would be a place which is not so confrontational, not so controversial, not so loud. But here's where we understand it's the culture making this loud. This is not that conservative, biblically-minded Christians stood up in the public square and said, what I want to talk about is sexuality and gender. It is a revolution in those issues that is now presented to us as if we must surrender to it. And one of the most important responsibilities of the Christian church is to talk about these issues out loud, but to talk about them in explicitly biblical terms, consistent with Christian moral witness over the course of the last two millennia on issues of marriage, sexuality, and gender. So that's Al Mohler kind of setting the stage, letting you know exactly what the conference is about and what Andy Stanley and the elders are doing. I also would like to highlight when he talks about the quieter middle space, that's the same kind of language that was used at the church that my wife and I attended that eventually embraced this uh, wicked doctrine. And that is something that is part and parcel of this kind of movement. There is all this ethereal language uh, never landing on something that is solid and is true. So just keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to now play Dr. Michael Brown's thoughts. Actually, he posted this a few days ago. It's actually titled, Pray for Andy Stanley's Repentance. Dr. Michael Brown and Andy Stanley have a relationship, and they have for about eight years. And so I'll let Michael Brown discuss that now. I want to encourage everyone to pray for the repentance and change of heart of Pastor Andy Stanley. We've had cordial interaction going back since 2015. And although at one point he asked me to publicly state that he did not believe in same-sex marriage when that was attributed to him at a conference where I was, I asked him, he said, no, that's not his belief. I have to be candid that for eight years of interaction, I have done my best. I have been as pointed and clear as I can by text and email and even speaking occasionally by phone, please answer this question. Is same-sex practice always wrong in God's sight? He would not answer that. Are same-sex relationships always wrong in God's sight? 
He would not answer it. When they finally put a, an answer in writing, it was, quote, sometimes ministry preempts clarity. And I said, brother, you are in error and you need to repent. So that's Dr. Michael Brown's take on the situation. Now to the elders of North Point Church, and I'll tell you a little bit about my interaction when I called the church. I called because I was originally going to write an email and just tell exactly what happened at the church my wife and I attended and how this ripped apart many, many lives, literally ripped them apart, and the devastation that was brought upon this church to the point that now the church barely exists. If it exists at all, they had to sell the property, and it has just ruined so many lives in the name of trying to minister uh, and as Andy said, uh, ministry preempts clarity. It, that's just a euphorism for we need to change our theology, and the devastation of that works itself out, and we can see it in the church my wife and I attended. So I was going to write this email, send it to the elders. I have no idea who the elders are, but I did find out that this is an elder-led church. And so I looked through their documents, and I couldn't find where you could contact them. So I actually called the church, and uh, the person that answered the phone asked me uh, why I wanted to contact the elders. I told her that I just wanted to reach out to them and send them an email. She, of course, said, well, I think it's on the website. We had a back and forth. She asked if she could call me back, which I obliged to. Uh, she called me back, and she said, yes, indeed, there is no email address on their webpage, and if I would like to contact them, I could put, she could put me in touch with Andy Stanley's assistant. I thought that I need not bother her, uh, Andy's assistant with that, and so... I decided to just make this video as a plea to the elders in the hopes that perhaps maybe someone that knows the elders or family would uh, allow them to hear, hopefully from a position of humility, that there needs to be a stand taken against what is going on here. And I, I found at their website, the Constitution of North Point Church, and what the authority of the Board of Elders is. And so it says, the Board of Elders does not determine programming. This responsibility falls to the executive staff. However, the Board is responsible for evaluating programming based on its appropriateness and effectiveness and furthering the overall mission of North Point Ministries. It goes on to say, for all practical purposes, the Board of Elders have final say in any and all matters concerning the overall direction of the organization. And so my simple plea is this. Elders, I know some of you on the board affirm what is going on, more than likely. I also know there are some of you on the board who do not. And for those who do not, I know it's hard, but it's time to do what God has assigned you to do, and that is to be an elder and watch over and protect the sheep of North Point Church. What we learned in the podcast of the rise and fall of Mars Hill is that there were a couple elders that did this. And yes, they were removed. Uh, Mark Driscoll did not allow that to stand. However, they did what was right and righteous. And in the end, that is what elders are called to do. So I plead with the elders of North Point, if you do not want your congregation to be ripped apart and eternal consequences heaped like burning coals of fire on the heads of of many under your care, and for you to face severe judgment by the Lord, I implore you, 
please put an end to what is going on at North Point regarding the practice and acceptance of homosexuality in the church. I do not know how many elders there are, and I do not know any of them. But I just ask sincerely, it's going to be hard, but that's why God has you where you are. So, so please act so that souls can literally be saved and not damaged beyond repair. Comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are on so-called Christian homosexual practice in the church. That concludes today's Chronicles of Clarity. I am Michael Goff. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe. We would really appreciate it. Until next time.